أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله in this chapter we're going to talk about another opportunity that presents itself within the holy month of Ramadan and that opportunity is for us to gain knowledge at a higher degree meaning when we are in this holy month of Ramadan, there are many acts of worship that we undergo. Many acts of worship that are prescribed, that are very much recommended. Amongst the recitation of the Holy Quran, amongst the prayers, amongst the du'as, amongst the ihya of Layal al-Qadr. So you'll find ourselves beginning to question many aspects. First and foremost, we want to understand that thing which we're reciting. What are we saying when we recite the Holy Quran? What do these verses mean? These du'as that we supplicate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have we at any moment stopped to think about what we're saying? Or do we just utter them as anyone else does just to get that tick on the checklist of this is a du'a that I've read on the holy nights or I've finished this particular chapter? Do you remember anything from that particular chapter? Do you or have you contemplated upon any particular verse that really struck within your soul when you came across it? Is there a particular dua that you felt very close to within this holy month? This is all an effect of knowledge that you have of those pieces of scriptures that you're reciting from of those acts of worship that you are undergoing. The opportunity that comes within Ramadan is that we can better equip ourselves with the knowledge necessary for us to better understand these acts of worship. That when we're reciting the Holy Quran, there's an opportunity for us to stop and think about what we're reciting, to read into the different translations that are there to understand the depths of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries to speak with us, to understand the depths of the du'as that the Ahlul Bayt have gifted us, to better understand what we're saying and how we're trying to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when we're supplicating towards Allah, how are we supplicating? From what door do we try to attain closeness towards Allah? From what door are we trying to speak to Allah from? This is very much fundamental and of the utmost importance in the month of Ramadan because there's so much to do. That we can utilize the platform of this month in order for us to better understand what we're doing. And we can understand this, there's an importance within the religion of Islam of gaining knowledge at every single moment of your life. As in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam states very clearly, min al-mahdi ila al that you should gain knowledge or try to attain knowledge from the cradle till the grave, highlighting to us that at every moment of your life, you will try and attain knowledge. But not knowledge for the sake of knowledge. We understand that there's aspects where it's better to gain knowledge at a younger age. When our Rasulullah clearly states, if you are to gain knowledge at a younger age, it's as if you're writing or engraving on stone that that will be solidified within you. Whereas if you try to gain knowledge, <coughs> excuse me. Whereas if you try to gain knowledge at an older age, the example given is, is as if you are trying to write on water. However much you try to write, that it will leave you. And taking this example, we begin to understand Rasulullah and the religion of Islam teaches it's people to always gain knowledge and understand what you're doing, not just do it for the sake of doing it. And taking this into perspective, Kumail says, says one day I found myself taken by Amir al-Mu'mineen ila Zahr al-Kufa, which is now known as Najaf. He says, Amir al-Mu'mineen took me by my hand and he said to me, Ya Kumail, people are of three types. Alimun Rabbani, Amir Amin says to Kumail, he says, people are of three types. 
the first of which is a scholar, Alimun Rabbani, a godly scholar. The second is a student on the path of salvation, meaning that you are trying to gain this knowledge in order for you to perfect yourself, to gain from, to attain salvation. It says the third group of people are those that, as we put it, whoever makes a sound, they make the same noise after them. Wherever the wind blows, they get pushed with it. These are the type of people that we try to refrain from being like. We want to be of those people, either the scholars that are godly or the people that try to gain knowledge on the path of salvation. And you'll find, we find many examples within history, especially in the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen, of people that perform rituals for nothing else except performing them, that they don't have the depth of understanding. As an example, the tradition states to us that Amir al-Mu'mineen was walking with one of his companions. And this companion and Amir al-Mu'mineen passed by a mosque in which he can hear on the early hours of the morning beautiful recitation. So the companion looks at Amir al-Mu'mineen and says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, how beautiful is this recitation of the Holy Quran. Amir al-Mu'mineen says something that the people that say the tradition stop at and begin to analyze. Amir al-Mu'mineen says the words, لا يغرك طنطنة الرجل The person that's reciting Quran, a person comes towards Amir al-Mu'mineen and says, look how beautiful the recitation is. Amir al-Mu'mineen replies to him by saying, he says, do not let this noise that this person is making, whilst reciting Quran, yes, but for this person that's reciting, it's just noise. It's not reaching deeper than that of his tongue. He says, do not let the noise that this man is making elude you or impress you. He says, I kept this in the back of my mind. The Amir al says this about a person that's reciting Quran. He says, the third civil war in the Battle of Nahrawan, in the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Amir al-Mu'mineen called me. He says, Ya Qambar, come. He says, do you remember that night in Kufa when you heard the beautiful recitation as you put it? He says, yes, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. I remember, I told you, and you told me, La yughirruka tantanat al-rajul. He says, this is the person that was reciting that night or that morning. He has come to fight the person that is the representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth, which was Amir al-Mu'mineen. He died fighting against Amir al-Mu'mineen. Showcasing to us that it's not enough that we pray, that we fast, that we supplicate, that we recite the Holy Quran. Rather, we need to have an understanding of what we're doing. The people that fight, let's say, Amir al-Mu'mineen, that, that fought Amir al-Mu'mineen, they were known as the people that had the darkened foreheads. Why? Because they used to prostrate so much. Other things they would be known about these people that fought Amir al-Mu'mineen in Nahrawan was that they used to pray Salat al-Subuh with the wudu of Isha on the previous night. Meaning that the whole night they were in worship as we look at it. They were praying, they were reciting Quran, supplications. However, they did not understand what they were doing. So for them, it's just movements of the body or sounds that are uttered by the tongue because they did not understand, they didn't use the knowledge that was given to them to understand the depths of that act which they were doing, that thing that they were reciting. So in order for us to learn from this, we need to apply this. We don't want to be like those people that fought Amir al the people that came towards Imam Hussein on the 10th of Muharram. You know, 30,000 in the smallest traditions, 30,000 people came together that called themselves Muslims, that prayed, that fasted nonetheless, but they fought Imam al Hussein on the 10th of Muharram. Did they understand what they were praying? Did they would say, Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, and they would kill his grandson. That's the understanding that we need to take from these stories to not fall into these categories that we pray and fast and recite Quran, yet we do not have an understanding of what we're doing and the depths of what we're doing. 
That's why we need to better educate ourselves and utilize this month, inshallah, to its full capacity to understand the supplications, to perfect ourselves in not only moving our bodies in salat, rather understanding it with a presence of heart. Not just reciting the Holy Quran, but understanding what we're reciting, creating a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the representative of the time, which Imam Sahib al-Asri was zaman. We need to have that, and that comes with educating ourselves first and foremost, in order for us to gain that which we would set ourselves to go towards, which is the closeness towards Allah and His representative. And inshallah, we can learn from this in this particular chapter and apply it within our lives. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.